Hello and welcome. I'm Martha Ann Brooks and I'm the principal trombone player of Orchestra The Swan. And they've asked me to make a little video for you to tell you how I came to play the trombone uh, as a career. Um, if you had asked me when I was little, would I play the trombone? It wouldn't even have entered my mind. Um, I'm from a Salvation Army background, so um, brass banding was very much in my blood from day one. My mum used to say that I could sing before I could talk and uh, they were quite worried about my speech development. But uh, once I did learn to speak, I think uh, they sort of regretted the fact that I could talk. But uh, music's always been in my blood. Um, I started playing piano when I was five, uh, the piano accordion when I was seven and started playing the cornet. Um, under the tutelage of the local Salvation Army band in Dunfermline, Fife in Scotland. And I can't say I took to the cornet. I wanted to play baritone, which is like a baby tuba, um, just like my dad, but I was stuck on cornet for two years. When I was about 12, the two boys who played trombone in the junior band decided to leave. And that was my opportunity. And I said, can I learn the trombone? So I went to learners, practice on Saturday morning, was given this big tube and uh, Sunday morning there I was sitting in the service not really having a clue what to do with this trombone. So soon after that I actually moved up to secondary school and uh, I started lessons with uh, a gentleman called Mr Bill Owen. He was actually a self-taught jazz trumpet player and if he was alive today, I'm sure he would say he was probably one page in front of me in all the books that we studied because he hadn't really got a clue. However, he was an extremely encouraging teacher and uh, really sort of started to fire that passion for music making. Um, I would also like to say um, that my accordion teacher, Charlie Duncan, was a great inspiration and Fortunately, the two teachers got on well, and it was never a case of, oh, trombone's better than the accordion, accordion's better than the trombone, and they really worked well together, uh, which was really nice. Um, I've got a lot to thank the Salvation Army for, because uh, two outdoor services, two indoor services every Sunday, um, various uh, territorial and divisional events, church events, gave you a real opportunity to perform from an early age. And I'm very grateful for all the opportunities um, that I had in my early years to gain that experience of uh, performing to an audience. When I went up to secondary school, for the first time I encountered an orchestra and I was so excited about joining an orchestra. Not that I didn't like brass bands. Um, so I sat down my first rehearsal, age 12, ready to play Colonel Bogey March. And I noticed that the music was in bass clef and I thought, well, that's okay. I know how to read bass clef. But when I started to play the notes, it all sounded wrong. And there I was, a little 12 year old, all my own at the back of the orchestra, nobody to ask. And I couldn't work out why everything was going wrong. Now, I'm not going to bore you, but basically when you play in an orchestra, you play at pitch that the music is written in and in brass bands, uh, you play at a special brass band pitch. And so the music and the slide positions are slightly different. But that was the first time I played in an orchestra. And the next year I was invited to do my first ever paid gig. The school was doing the musical Oklahoma and uh, I was one of only two non six formers to be invited to play in the orchestra. And at the end of the week, we were given a five pound book token. And I thought I was the bee's knees with this five pound book token. I would like to say that the musical wasn't held in school. It was held at Carnegie Hall. Now, you probably know the one in New York, but uh, we have one in my hometown of Dunfermline because that's where Andrew Carnegie was born. So I made my debut at Carnegie Hall quite early in my life. Once I got the, the bug for orchestras, um, I auditioned for Fife Youth Orchestra. And again, I'm extremely grateful for the opportunities that Fife uh, County Council gave to me because uh, every Friday night they would run three different bus services all around Fife and would do a pick up uh, for students to take them to the rehearsal, uh, to our rehearsal and then drop us off. And for me coming from a family uh, who didn't have a car, nobody drove in my, my um, family, it was fantastic um, at no cost um, that 
they provided this service and I had five very happy years in Fife Eve Orchestra. Around the time of 14, I uh, took part in the Fife Music Festival. Fife Music Festival um, has celebrated its 40th year this year and um, has been a real gateway for people such as myself um, getting uh, a bit more involved in music making. I won the overall brass competition that year and the uh, adjudicator said to me, oh, I assume you go to junior conservatoire and I hadn't a clue who he was talking about. Um, I found out that there was a Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. They had a junior and senior department. So um, after investigation, I applied and was successful. Um, so I only got the chance to do one year at Junior Conservatoire because I didn't find out about it till almost too late. Um, four years I followed at full-time uh, college, which I really enjoyed. I got my Diploma of Brass Teaching and Performance uh, and was awarded the Governor's Recital Prize for Brass too. In that time, I was also a member of the National Youth Orchestra of Scotland. So for my postgraduate, um, I went down to London to Goldsmiths College and studied for the one year course of the National Centre for Orchestral Studies. This was a phenomenal course which gave you a real insight to what playing in an orchestra full time would be like. And it was a wonderful opportunity doing weekly concerts, doing recordings for Radio 2, Radio 3 and we used to have some international conductors come and support the course. Um, I was very lucky to be chosen to play the Larson Trombone Concertino uh, during that time with the orchestra. During that year, um, I also represented Scotland in the Jeunesse Musicale World Youth Orchestra, which was a great honour to, to represent my country. So immediately after I finished the course, um, I went to Paris and joined l'Orchestre uh, d'Europe and uh, spent a year uh, in Paris. I can't say I always enjoyed it, if I'm perfectly honest. Uh, I was quite homesick. Um, half the orchestra were French, mostly woodwind and brass players, and half were Bulgarians, Romanians. We had a few Japanese, and I think there were six of us Brits. So it was a very different way of learning, very different style compared to British um, standards. So a very interesting time. And then after one year there, I was really excited and honoured to be awarded the second trombone position with the Hong Kong Philharmonic Orchestra. Um, it was a big decision to go to Hong Kong. I mean, we're talking just as fax machines were starting to be used, certainly no Skype, no FaceTime, no Facebook, no emails. And so to go halfway across the world was really quite a daunting experience and um, especially not really know much about the orchestra but I was very pleased that I took the the chance and I had two lovely colleagues Phil and Bill two American trombone players and uh, we had a, a wonderful time together we played trios we played quartets with another student and uh, there was chamber music and of course being the only professional orchestra in Hong Kong, we got many opportunities to play for visiting ballet companies, opera companies, and of course it was such a wonderful place to live and the food was pretty good as well. After two years, I decided to come back to Britain as um, the principal bassoonist of Orchestra This One, some people may know him, uh, Philip Brooks, um, lured me back and we got married. And so for the last 30 years almost, I've been living and working in Birmingham. So um, I haven't had a, a full-time job since coming back. Sometimes that's quite nice because you've got the versatility to do lots of different uh, things. Um, you can teach, you can play and uh, sort of you can choose your own gigs, but sometimes it would be nice to have that stability. However, I've had the chance to freelance with lots of different orchestras. I have had the chance to tread the boards with the RSC in Stratford. I've run my own under fives music classes called Martha's Music. I've played with chamber groups such as Prince of Wales Brass, Inside Out, Trombone Quartet and English Trombone Consort. Um, I'm involved in church music at our local church and I teach um, from junior school and I have taught up to university level. So yeah, it can be precarious, um, 
if you had asked me when I was about seven or eight, would I have chosen this life? No, I wouldn't. I thought I would go into banking or accountancy until I went to Royal Scotch Academy of Music and Drama. I didn't really know you could do music as a career. But I'm just very grateful to all the people who helped me over the years, people at Salvation Army, Fife Yorkshire College and uh, all my professional colleagues for making this a wonderful life. Thank you.